Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and this episode is about the northern water snake. And it's a water snake that I saw in my pond over the summer, and I followed him for a number of days, and then the story will end with its unfortunate demise, and I'll tell you how that turned out. Water snakes are really common in Virginia, and if you're walking along a river bank on the river near a pond or lake, you'll often run into a water snake that's basking in the sun, and he'll slip off when he sees you and disappear in seconds into the safety of the water. The scientific name of the northern water snake is Nerodia sipidon, and it comes from the Greek. Nerodia means through the water, and sipidon means a serpent whose bite causes mortification. And so it's aptly named because uh, the Nerodia, the northern water snake, lives in the water. And when encountered, if you try to pick him up, they are notoriously aggressive and will try to bite you repeatedly. Now, this northern water snake that I found where I made this other episode on them was actually very untypically docile and never tried to bite me while I handled it. And remember, while these are non-venomous, these snakes tend to bite aggressively if you try to pick one up. Northern water snakes and cottonmouths or water moccasins kind of share the same niche. Water snakes are often mistaken for cottonmouths or water moccasins, even though they're often hundreds of miles out of the cottonmouth or water moccasin range. They do share the same niche and the same habitats, and harmless water snakes are often killed by people thinking they're cottonmouths. Water snakes have a wide variation in colors and patterns and often have very distinct bands leading to their other name as the banded water snake. They are non-venomous, heavy-bodied snakes with rounded, stout heads and generally rounded pupils and a relatively stout, heavy body. The venomous water moccasins have a very large angular head in contrast, vertical pupils, and a pit between their eye and nostril. Behaviorally, water snakes will usually flee, while cottonmouths, if encountered on the ground, will often hold their ground, display an open mouth, and show you that white interior of the mouth, giving them their name, cottonmouth. And again, water snakes, they will usually flee. So even when sighting a cottonmouth would be hundreds of miles out of the, their known range, people will still tell me that they've seen a cottonmouth. This is the pond I built 10 or 12 years ago, periodically stocked it with trout and fed them. But lately, I've not restocked, and I've let the pond go to a more natural state. And it's full of minnows and tadpoles and frogs and various amphibians and lots and lots of newts as well. However, in all this time, I've never had a water snake until this summer. Last summer, I was so excited when I went down to the pond, walked along the banks, and stirred up a water snake. He was laying in the brush, and he suddenly bolted out into the middle of the pond where I could see him swimming. And over a little bit of time, he'd circle around and come back and hide back in the grasses. I thought, man, this is great. I finally got a water snake in my pond, and I really enjoyed seeing him there. I was really happy that he was part of the food web and this ecology of my pond. So each day, I'd walk down to the pond, and sure enough, see that water snake in the same place along that section of bank where the sun shines and is probably there basking in the sun. And then when I walked up, it would slither away and I'd watch him uh, swim. And eventually he'd turn and come back and hide back in the grasses. Sadly, one day I went down to the pond and I couldn't find him. And I thought, well, that's really weird. Where is he gone? What's happened to the water snake? And I was really surprised that I didn't see him. So I started looking around, and then I saw a clue. I looked down in the water, and you can see these very large bird tracks. Any idea what this is? I'm pretty sure the only bird here with tracks that large is of a great blue heron. 
And great blue herons are notorious for eating all kinds of aquatic life, including snakes. So here, the cycle of life happened, the food chain, the food web that all life is dependent upon. And here, I had to face the reality that my water snake was now gone. So since then, I haven't seen either the great blue heron or the water snake. I think it's a great water snake habitat. There's lots of food. There's minnows, there's tadpoles, there's frogs, there's newts, there's all kinds of amphibians. It's a great habitat for water snakes. I hope soon I'll get to see another one. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature at Your Door. Remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. Do you have any water snake stories that you want to share with me? I'd love to hear about them. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.